there's a lot of um, discussion around migraines and headaches. People use both terms loosely and may not even um, know whether there's a difference between a migraine or a headache. So why don't we start there? Um, walk me through what the difference is um, between a headache and a migraine. Yeah, of course, yeah. So I, I understand like there is uh, an overlap using those terms. I see this every day when patients come and say, for example, yeah, I have migraines or I have headaches or I don't have migraines, but I have headaches and I'm a little confused on, on what the difference is. So I can tell you pretty much it's very simple. So headache is a symptom, it's just having pain in your head. And that's what I explain patients and it can be different quality of pain. So uh, it can be feeling some kind of pressure or a stabbing type of pain. And, and if it's above the neck, we call this a headache, which can be pretty much the manifestation of any condition, right? Uh, migraine is a complex neurological syndrome. So that's a diagnosis. And migraine headache is one of the symptoms that are part of the migraine disorder, but is not the only symptom. So um, when you hear patients um, that suffer from migraines, you hear the patient saying, or you, you hear your friend or your family member saying, you know, I, I need to turn off the line, I need to lay down because the lies bother me, the noise is bother me, or I'm very sick from my stomach, but I'm also having this headache. Um, so that's what we consider migraine. So it's not only having a headache, but it's a group of symptoms and headache is part of those symptoms, but it's not the only symptom. Okay, so Dr. Mazura, walk me through some of the, you know, when you have a patient come in and they're saying, oh, I have a headache and so on and so forth. What are the symptoms of a migraine that you listen for and you know right away, okay, we're not talking about a headache here. We're talking about yeah, Of course, migraine. I mean, it, what, what as a patient, the, the first complaint that, that you have is, of course, the headache because anything that produces pain it causes disability and decrease your function. And that's what is usually the most bothersome. But I always ask the patients, um, does lie and noise bother you? For example, do you ever feel sick from your stomach or you feel nauseous? Uh, do you ever have to go to the bathroom and work or school because you're so sick from your stomach that you need to vomit? Uh, do you ever get uh, your vision becomes blurry? So that's another very common symptom of migraines. So sometimes the symptoms can be very mild and the patient kind of like focus on just complaining about the headache because it's the pain. Um, but sometimes I try to ask in different ways. For example, like if you use your phone while you're using the headaches, do you ever see the your text looking a little blurry, or are you able to watch TV and put your headphones and 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 you know listening to music, or that bothers bothers you a lot and make you pain worse? Um, so those are kind of like the questions and the symptoms that are the most common symptoms associated with migraines, but there's like a, a, a full spectrum of other symptoms that sometimes we underestimate. So I give you an example, a lot of patients report a lot of neck tightness and neck pain, and they think that they're having issues with their neck, but it's actually part of their, of their migraine. So um, there's many other like uh, symptoms that can be associated with, with a migraine attack uh, or with a migraine disorder as well. Wow. So the next thing I want to kind of switch gears in, oftentimes um, studies are showing that um, migraines are about three times more common in women than they are um, in natural, you know, alternatives someone can do at home relief to symptoms of a migraine. So why do you think that is, that they're three times more likely in women? So we do know, I mean, there's, uh, we have a huge uh, data uh, base about studies um, about women and related to migraine disorder and increase, for example, in cardiovascular risk and stroke. Um, and we, we, we have a pretty, pretty large database uh, that was started actually at Harvard many, many years ago. And that's where like most of the study has been based off. But we do know that there is a strong hormonal relation uh, between migraine. Um, um, we see a lot of like younger women uh, reporting only having migraine attacks during their menstrual period or certain part of their menstrual cycle. So we do know there is a strong relationship between uh, migraine attacks and, and hormones in women, uh, but that doesn't mean that men don't have migraine. It's just like it's more frequent on, on women than men. Okay.
Okay. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I can, I can certainly see, when I think about how often I hear about people having migraines, it's typically women who I hear them from. So the next thing here, we oftentimes hear the connection between Botox and migraines. So is Botox um, commonly used to treat migraines? So Botox is uh, uh, it's an approved FDA approved treatment uh, for chronic migraines. Um, so we've been using Botox for many years. Uh, it's about like 13 years since the FDA approved uh, Botox for the use um, of prevention of chronic migraines. Um, so it's definitely an approved treatment. What is Botox? All right, so Botox is an, actually a neurotoxin. Um, it's a neurotoxin that is produced by a specific type of bacteria. Uh, it's been widely used for many, many years. We're very comfortable and we know a lot of how this neurotoxin works. What it usually does is inhibits the release of certain substance uh, that either causes uh, muscle contraction. Um, that's pretty much what has been widely used for cosmetic purposes. So if the, mu the muscle doesn't move, then you're not going to have this uh, wrinkles in the skin. Uh, but from the migraine perspective, we did find out that besides inhibiting the release of this substance that produces or induces the contraction of the muscle, it also inhibits the release of this neuropeptide called CGRP that is highly involved in the migraine uh, mechanism. So over the last... Um, over the last probably like more than six years at this point, um, we have newer medications that are focused or targeting to block this specific neuropeptide, the CGRP. Uh, but Botox has been doing that for way longer. Um, so that's pretty much how Botox work uh, preventing migraines is a peripheral inhibition of the release of this neuropeptide that eventually what it does when it's released is activating the nerve terminals around um, certain areas of the head that eventually will trigger a migraine attack. Okay, so it's it's the, I was going to say, in, in a way that I think I'll understand it. So you're saying the, what's being injected inside is, you're, are you saying it's it's loosening? I'm not clear on that. So pretty what, much, what when, it, yeah, so when, when we inject the neurotoxin, the, the mm -hmm. we inject Botox, it does two things in the muscle because we inject the the we inject the neurotoxin inside the this muscles the muscles in the head and the face, and what it does is two things, right? The first thing, which is what you get from the cosmetic perspective, is inhibiting the release of a substance that activates the muscle to contract and to move, and also at the same time will inhibit the release of this neuropeptide called CGRP, which usually when it's released at the at the at the at the, in the nerves it activates the migraine attack so okay. so a lot of a lot of patients and a lot of people think that when we inject botox for migraine it's because we are releasing the tension in the muscles around the head because that's what we traditionally know um botox does but the real part in the migraine sense or when we use botox for migraines is we're looking for this other second effect which is the inhibition of the release of the cgrp from the from the nerve terminals wow and dr mazuro so where exactly um is it injected because i'm thinking if if someone is coming in a patient who's coming for cosmetic reasons I would assume it's not, is, um, or maybe it is injected the same way for someone coming in for migraine. And and does it alter your appearance when you have a migraine? I mean, you may say, oh, I have to get Botox. I don't really want Botox, but that's what's going to treat my migraine. So does it alter appearance and where is it injected? Yes. So that's a great question because a lot of patients that, that when we first discussed the option of Botox as a treatment for their, for their uh, prevention, uh, they are pretty concerned or they're like, you know, very aware that there might be some kind of cosmetic changes in their face and they, they are not looking for this effect and they don't want this to change their appearance. Um, so I can tell you, it, it is the, the, the injection location of this in the forehead is very similar to where the location for cosmetic injections are. Uh, and I'm talking in the upper part of the face. 
So when we inject um, the protocol for um, for uh, chronic migrants, when we use Botox, it's a pretty set up protocol. So everyone gets the same injections, the same number of injections in the same um, uh, muscle groups. So we inject the forehead. So we inject the area that covers the front uh, muscles and also the upper part of the forehead. But we also inject on the temporalis muscle, which is this area on the temples. We inject muscles on the back of the head that is called the occipitalis muscle. We inject the upper part of the neck and we in inject the traps muscle, which are the, sh the upper shoulder muscles. Um, so we do at different locations that when people uh, get Botox purely for cosmetic purposes. But again, we're also injecting the forehead. So that's, that's going to have some kind of cosmetic effect, even if we're not injecting the Botox for cosmetic reasons, but we're injecting the Botox following this preset uh, protocol for chronic migraines. And Dr. Mazuro, so how long, you know, in essence, does it last? How long is it going to last? If you get a Botox injection to treat your migraine, um, how long can you go without it really coming reverting? So what, what happens is usually we inject the Botox every 12 weeks. That's about like uh, every three months. That's what we know. That's the duration of the, the effect of Botox in the system or in the muscle until it completely wears off. Um, it usually doesn't work right away. So I'm pretty clear with patients and explain once we do the procedure and the injection, it's you know, the expectation has to be real and it's not like you're not going to have a headache the next day or in two days because Botox takes a little bit of time to start being effective and start working. So it's about somewhere around between like a week, seven days and sometimes up to 10 days when we start seeing effect. Um, of course, when patients are getting Botox every three months and they've been getting this treatment for, for, for a while or for several sessions, then it tends to work and act faster the same way that it tends to like nowhere off sooner than the next injections. But but we do know uh, that the injections are every 12 weeks or every three months. And, and that's what we consider the, the regular protocol for injections for, for chronic migraines. And the next most important question that I think many patients are curious about is, does insurance cover Botox for migraines? Yes, so Botox is been like I say I mentioned before, it's it's been approved for many, many years and it's covered for every single insurance that includes Medicare and Medicaid patients. Um so I don't think there is uh, any concern about Botox ever being approved as long as the patient meets the criteria or the request from every insurance. Every insurance have like different criteria. They're still very similar. And also, as long as the patient meet the criteria for the diagnosis of chronic migraine, there shouldn't be any uh, concern about insurance denial of this treatment. Um, it's a very effective treatment. It definitely changed the patient's life. When it does work for patients, it's, it's a huge change. And um, I see this on a regular basis when patients come for the second tour for treatment. And I have patients that are been receiving Botox for six, seven, even 10 years and they continue having them because they have been able to become functional and to kind of like get their life back when it was taking over migrants in the past. And aside from cosmetic reasons and even migraines, what else does Botox treat, you know? Yeah, so there is uh, there's the different multiple conditions that the medicine has started using Botox for. So and at least in my, uh, area of expertise, which is neurology, we use it besides from chronic migraines, has been used for dystonic, uh, you know, with dystonia, which is uh, a muscle spasms in different mm -hmm. areas of the body, uh, most commonly on the neck, but it can occur in any other part, in an arm, in an arm or the leg. It's been used for blepharospasm, which is in the eyelids, it's a certain condition that causes an, an spasm of the eyelid. Has been used also in the GI war, has been used for like increased motility when patients suffer from gastroparesis. In the urology war, has been used for certain bladder conditions when there is like, you know, um, um, when the patients with this diagnosis that they can benefit from injections in their bladder from Botox. Uh, it's been used for patients with spasticity after they suffer some kind of a stroke or a traumatic uh, brain injury or patients that have like um, cerebral palsy. Um, so it, it, it is it is widely used for other conditions besides chronic migraines. All right. So 
let's say I'm a patient, I'm interested in having treatment for my migraines, um, how would I schedule an appointment at LifeBridge to do something like that? So we have a pretty amazing uh, staff here. So it's very easy most of the time to communicate, just call the neurology department uh, and just ask uh, for an appointment with Dr. Masuera or with the headache uh, team. Um, it's not only myself, I work with Colleen Miriam, she's the nurse practitioner, also headache specialist. So uh, the two of us run the program. Um, so I will tell patients if, if they are suffering from migraines they are seeking for some relief and they are interested in different uh, treatments and that including Botox, just to call the neurology department at Sinai Hospital um, and just get an appointment with, with the headache team. All right, that'll be definitely useful, I am sure, to so many headache and migraine sufferers who are looking for relief. Thank you so much, Dr. Mazura. I really appreciate you taking time to talk to us about this. You're welcome. Have a good day.